chapter of the War Resisters League and Woo! friends. The War Resisters League was founded in 1923 by activists who had opposed World War I. We support all of those in this country and in every country around the world who refuse to serve in the military and go to war. Yes. And all of those who refuse to pay their war taxes. Yes. Yes. And all of those who refuse to work in the weapons industry. Yes. Yes. People are asking themselves and their friends and their families, especially today, they're asking themselves, what can we do to stop the horrific wars that are going on? One of the best, most effective, direct ways that we can stop the war is to deprive the war makers and the politicians of the money they need to wage the wars. Deprive them of the money and deprive them of the bodies. Leo Tolstoy, one of the great peace activists in history, often said, if people refuse to serve in the military, if they refuse to pay their war taxes, the politicians and the war makers cannot wage their wars. That's right. That's right. The wars begin when the people up at the top, the, the war makers and the politicians decide to go to war. We direct our protests towards those at the top. But we also must have to take responsibility for our role in supporting the war machine. Everybody must take a responsibility for stopping the war. The president starts the war usually, sometimes with the consent of Congress, sometimes without. The orders to go to war are passed down to the Secretary of Defense, to the uh, uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff, to the generals in the Pentagon, down to the commanders in the field, further down the chain of command, to the pilots who fly the F-16s and the Apache helicopters, who push the buttons that launch the Hellfire missiles. The orders go down to the bombardiers who open the hatches, who drop the bombs, and down to the infantry soldiers who pick up the rifles and pull the triggers. But if those pilots refuse to fly those airplanes and launch those missiles, if those bombardiers refuse to open the hatches and drop those bombs, if the infantry soldiers refuse to pick up those rifles and pull those triggers, if the working people refuse to pay their war taxes and refuse to work in the war industry, then all of those orders that come down from the top are not so effective, they're not so important, they're not so relevant. Wherever you are on the chain of command, whether you're up at the top, in the middle, or on the bottom, you have a responsibility for stopping the war machine. War tax resistance has occurred throughout history all over the world. People have always been resisting war taxes, and people have always been resisting, refusing to participate in war throughout the history of the world and throughout American history. There are many ways to become a war tax resistor. There are people here from organizations like the War Resisters League and other groups that practice war tax resistance. Speak to them today. Find out how you can become a war tax resistor. There's reading material. People you can speak to who are war tax resistors will tell you how to become a war tax resistor. Never think that you are too small to be effective. If you ever doubt that a small person can be effective, think of the last time you had a mosquito in your sleeping bag. Be that mosquito. Join us. Become a war tax resistor. If you work for peace, don't pay for war. If you work for peace, don't pay for war. Yes! Yeah.